Coming up tonight, election 2016, a lot of other news with Gerald Salente in this hour. David and I will be hosting the fourth hour. There'll be live coverage tonight, 7 until probably 9 or 10, uh, when the results come in on these key states. I'll be breaking that down in a moment. Joe Biggs is running around the office, he said, with goosebumps. He showed me, he actually has them, uh, because he served a lot of tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, got shot and blown up repeatedly in armored vehicles. So he's in a combat uh, group. Saw a lot of fighting, and he is freaking out over this Italian magazine article and other things dealing with Mexico and ISIS down there, which we know is down there. We know they're bringing them into Europe. They're bringing them in here, and Biggs is going to pop in at the bottom of the hour, and then he'll be on with David Knight for probably 10, 15 minutes in the fourth hour because Biggs has been down there to the very area investigating this and found mosques and all sorts of other stuff, and the FBI came and questioned Biggs and said, yeah, we don't even go into that area. Uh, but we think what uh, the intel that you and Judicial Watch has is very serious. Now, again, there is radical Islam. Why is our government opening up Europe and the U.S. to bring these people in? It's crazy. So we'll pop in with a report on that as we get it all codified and ready. But it's red linked up on Drudge. We've also added the article to Infowars.com. Also coming up. Obama's global warming plan cost poor Americans $44 billion and raised taxes by 166%. So we're going to be uh, going over all of that as well. But wh I know, I'm just guessing. And I know he's an honest guy, so he'll tell me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, he'll correct me. I bet money that Gerald Salente, because this guy reads like 15 newspapers a day, hundreds of news articles online, my crew's been up there a few times. They say it's all he's constantly doing is researching, which is great. I try to do that, too. But I bet he wants to talk about 16 times Obama said there would be no boots on the ground in Syria. We have 16 times he said it. I only played four of them earlier because I'm not going to play 16. And now they've had the head of the Defense Department spokesperson via the State Department come out and say it was never said and laugh at the media. That's worse than Gibbs saying there is no drone program years and years after it was public and in the news. That's like saying the Chicago Bears aren't out of Chicago. It's that, or Superman isn't fictionally from Krypton. Or Batman isn't from Gotham. I mean, I use childlike analogies because this is ridiculous. In fact, we should get the clip of Gibbs saying, you know, I was told to say that there weren't any drones, even though this is an admitted program. That's Toto pulling back the curtain and take that clip with Toto and then cut it in to Obama saying there's no boots on the ground ever, I promise, I pledge, and then cutting to the State Department saying it never happened and the Pentagon saying it. And then I come out and talk about Beyonce and the Super Bowl and her new video and MTV admittedly having the CIA, that's been declassified for years, with their anti-family pro-riot message, but also the Ford Foundation. I show people the articles, and they've had tons of publications. Esquire, New York Daily News come out and say, I'm insane, it's a lie. What is the tactic here with the bald-faced lying, like saying there are no death panels in Obamacare, or it's free, or raising the debt limit doesn't raise the debt limit, or... No one's coming after your guns, Bloomberg says. I'm the, I'm, I believe in the Second Amendment. I am a big gun supporter. He has 15 bodyguards on average. We have all these videos. He has guns. He wants total gun bans, like Chicago and D.C. But he doesn't want your guns. Is it arrogance? Is it delusion? Is it disdain? Are they trying to condition us to accept it? Because... They had a Gallup poll and another poll the last two weeks, and both of them showed 6%, we can pull them up, trust in the mainstream media. We've got actuaries, uh, and I, I've admitted it, I mean, that's how the internet works. We've got it all turned off. We don't track everybody, but we can see the big actuaries from Google. We have like a 91% approval rating online. We have people absolutely trust us and love us. And it's such a confidence people have in us that I get mad at myself when I listen to rebroadcast making little mistakes or I could have said something better or getting a name wrong but people know I'm really trying to tell you the truth and we are decades usually ahead of everybody else just like Gerald Salente that's why he's a best-selling author that's why he's successful because people are looking for the truth not arrogance I'm not hey, I'm so smart I know it all but man 
The minute I saw on the sheet this morning, they had a clip of the State Department yesterday saying that Obama never said that there wouldn't be boots on the ground, never pledged there wouldn't be. I, I just sat back and I went, we, there's clips of him saying that. They go, we already have it 16 times. But in case you're a new listener, you don't believe me, you know, because I'm the conspiracy person. I question mainstream media that's a known liars. Even USA Today had to admit it. 16 times Obama said there would be no boots on the ground in Syria. Now, I'm speculating here. I usually go off facts. Gerald, am I wrong? Because I never talked to you before you come on the show, or very rarely. You know, we don't tell you what the subjects are. I always just, you know, respect the fact that you are out there looking at really important stuff. I ask questions. You bring up topics. Were you going to bring this up today, or, or is my instinct wrong? Well, actually, you know, we do trends in the news each weekday night, part of the subscription to the Trends Journal. And that was our broadcast last night with Obama pledging no boots on the ground. And it's the same thing with the Iraq, no boots on the ground. We're going to save them Yazidis up in the mountains. Remember that one? And it, he's lied about everything. He's, a, you know, he's a traitor to this country, a real disgrace. And by their deeds, you shall know them. Hey, folks, the first day he was in office, I'm going to close Guantanamo by the end of the year. Oh, remember, you know, he was just over there in Europe, you know, championing more war. The last time he, when he went as candidate Obama to Germany, there were hundreds of thousands of people out there cheering him on. He was going to be the man of peace, he even won the peace prize. We should call the peace prize a piece of crap. He goes on to invade Libya, destroys Syria, Assad has to go, on and on. A, a, a troop increase of what, 33,000 in Afghanistan? Again, more troops back into Iraq. He's lied about everything that he's I agree, taught. but here's my question, because you worked as a top lobbyist. You've worked at the biggest corporations before you just broke off and became a journalist, what, 25, 30 years ago? Gerald Salente, TrendsResearch.com, Trends Journal. Why are they lying more? Clearly, they're lying more, right? And it's more brazen, more naked, and then their credibility's gone from like 15% to 6%. I mean, do they understand that they have the credibility of a rotting, dead dog that they're telling us is a delicious, fresh Christmas turkey? Well, again, go back to what you were saying about the media. It's a 6% rating among the people. You know, they rated the worst job being a reporter for their newspaper. So there is no press anymore. Every time you go on to these shows, you see them all, whether it's Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS. It's the same paid flunkies. That's all they are. They're paid prostitutes coming out as, quote, as experts. They're on the payroll. So it's one club. And yes, the lying has never been at this level. No one ever calls them out. And when they do call them out, it's only for a very short amount of time. So no, it's never been like this. You can never get away with the amount of lies that Obama has said that in, it, it, it's unprecedented. And again, they, his believers continue to defend him. Well, I tell you, Gerald, uh, a lot of this is comical, but a lot of it's also very, very sad. Like they've had, as I mentioned earlier, scores of biggest, big media outlets come out and say that I'm lying about the CIA being involved in domestic media, when, as you know, three years ago, as part of a PSYOP, it was all over the news that they, quote, will even lie to us for our own good. They use the word deception, and they're going to work with local media and, of course, they're working with the NFL, and MTV's the worst. They admittedly get money. Beyonce is on record hooked into all these combines. And then they have the nerve to act like I'm crazy to say there's a CIA connection to the media. Well, they, they, look, the CIA has been connected to the media since the beginning of the CIA. It's a fact. They go after people like you and me because we're telling the truth and exposing their lies. So they take cheap shots and will do anything to destroy anyone, pointing out what liars, hypocrites, sociopaths, and psychopaths they are and those who they are defending. Gerald, what well, point have we gotten to uh, with their credibility? I mean, what happens when it goes to 1% or, or, or 0.5 or something? I mean, this huge rotting facade is blowing in the wind like a rotten barn. 
How does it fall? Does it fall? Or do these crazies have a nuclear war and put out a press release when everybody's dead uh, to themselves in a bunker that no war happened? Well, I don't think they want to put out a nuclear war, but they have crazy people that will certainly start That's one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean when they put out delusions like this, historically it will infect their own brains and they'll think they can do anything. Exactly. And look, it's, it's the language that they use. They use the language of hate. How many times have we heard from the New York Times, CNN, that Russia invaded Ukraine? They put it right there. Russia never invaded. Or Russia invaded uh, Georgia. Or Russia invaded Syria. All horse crap. Exactly. So again, and then you look at the connections. I mean, who's that little boy that got on CN uh, ABC? Stephanopoulos? Yes, yeah, Steph on this. Who was he with? He was the flunky for Clinton. Who was that guy, Carney, before Obama's spokesperson? Carney, Carnival Man? Oh, yeah, another flunky with Time Magazine. Look who's married to whom. Look at the connections between them. There is no free press. There's no free press just like there's no free United States. I hear Obama going down to Cuba shooting his mouth off about freedom and democracy, and now they have to have it over there while well, they're arresting everybody protesting down in Washington, D.C. Oh, you want to protest? We'll give you a free a, a protest zone. Oh, yeah, oh, by the way, and we'll exclude people from that zone that we don't want. Wait till you see the, the carnival show of the presidential oh, and, rally. Uh, and, and the whole leftist movement now all over the place says we want safe spaces everywhere where no one who's a libertarian or someone we disagree with is even allowed to be on the street. They'll come over and attack you, and the police have been ordered to let them do it, and the faculty at colleges will even help attack their own students that dare have their own private meeting that was authorized in the commons area for Donald Trump. And they show up and beat them up, and the school says, good job, beating people up is good. I mean, this is sick authoritarianism. Well, exactly. I was going to say, wait till you see the when they have the uh, the the, the uh, conventions. Convention. Yeah, you're going to see people roped off for miles away. They're not going to let anybody get anywhere except the people they want to get through. Then they'll let them through, just like what happened with over there. Oh, here's in an Chicago. example: the RNC will not release my crew five or six hotel rooms, so I'm having to do other stuff. They just say, no, we have all the hotels in Cleveland. You have to go through us. No, you can't have it. And no, we're not giving you press passes, even though when I was only on like 30 radio stations, I could always get them. They're now going, no, you don't get to go in. We'll let anybody else in but not Alex Jones. And they're trying to ban Roger Stone from the events because he's kind of like the shadow campaign manager. Let's just admit it. The, the shadow campaign manager, the former head of Trump's campaign, they're talking about trying to not let him in or banning him from Cleveland or having him arrested, Gerald. And that's, that's what I'm saying. There is no freedom. So there's no freedom of press. The, the elections are rigged. This, is a, this isn't a democracy. It's a democracy. How can anybody call it free? Look at the gangs we got running the show. Idiocracy. Yeah. All right. I asked a few questions. You went off on a beautiful jag there. Better rant than I could do. What is front and center on the radar of the great Gerald Salente uh, today? I mean, what are the trends? What's the big news? What's the next shooter drop? Well, well, the one is, you know, people should listen to what Soros said last week about China. And he's concerned about the Chinese economy going to crash. And, you know, again, you get the prostitutes on CNBC, MSNBC, B uh, Bloomberg. And again, these are all paid people for, by and large, that they have on there as, as experts. And they're saying, no, it's not that bad. They just came out. China has a debt to GDP ratio now of about 250%. The only reason the Chinese economy is growing at all is they're putting in unprecedented amounts of, of stimulus through bank loans. So on the economic front, you take a look over at Europe, even with negative interest rates, we're looking at the European Central Bank buying back 80 billion euros. Gerald, hold on. Before you go through the laundry list of why we're in trouble that you predicted accurately and others have, it's pretty much now admitted that we're going down the tubes, that QE failed, so they're going to go even further to negative rates. Specifically, though, where are we just in general, in your view, worldwide? A depression in most areas, recessions in the West. 
It's a global recession. You go, you have to look at the countries, you know, whether it's Venezuela, which we, we were playing a clip on earlier, whether it's Brazil, whether it's Nigeria, you know, the, the largest countries in Africa, the 11th largest uh, oil exporter in the world. It, it, they need money. Angola, Kazakhstan, you name the country. Every country that's commodity rich is becoming poor as commodity prices continue. Saudi Arabia is having to borrow money. Saudi Arabia just borrowed $10 billion and it's their first borrowing since 1991. They need oil at $100 a barrel to break even. It's floating around the 40s mark. So you're looking and then going back to saying what's going to happen, you just saw Obama go over to Europe, preach war, and talk about globalization. So they know the problems are there. And by the way, with the, with the one thing missing to me in America is that real strong third party movement that you're seeing around the world. Why they just had an, a, a referendum in the Netherlands. Not, and by the way, the referendum happened because of a satirical group that got enough people signed on to put a referendum out, not to allow Ukraine into the European Union. The people voted. You, you're seeing what's going on in Europe with Obama going over there. The people want to break out of, of the Eurozone. The Brexit exit. From the UK, the Brexit. They, they're, they're very concerned about this because it's a breakup of globalization. And the globalists, as you know, correct me if I'm wrong, they always thought they would have managed crises they used to bring in total world government between the three power blocks. But it appears from my research, it's not going as they thought, and that their whole world government, new world order project is now in deep trouble and is being fundamentally uh, broken, not just financially, but in the minds of the people, because worldwide, the left, the right, you name it, whether it's the liberal mayor of London, very prominent, or whether it's right-wing groups like UKIP, it's becoming very popular to be anti-New World Order. And my worldview, your worldview, very similar to each other, are being proven, uh, the conspiracy theory worldview, as the new cosmology, because it's really the reality. Doesn't mean we have all the answers, but truly, this populist, anti-New World Order, anti-corporate fascism movement is now transcending their lies, offering a new narrative much closer to reality. I think the New World Order Project is in deep, you know what, Gerald? Is that an accurate statement or tell me what you think? Well, because just go by the facts. Of course it's accurate. Look what happened last uh, week over in Austria. You had, a, again, a new party coming in and, and now they're, it looks like they're going to be gaining power. And that's what, again, this is what's missing in America. Go take a look at happened also in German elections just a week ago. The new party coming in. Super nationalist right wing groups coming in in Austria. Absolutely. Well, they call them right wing. That's the thing that really gets me. No, no, no. I mean, what I agree. Right they call libertarian right nationalists right wing. You're absolutely right. I mean, they're not. Uh, they're ar trying to arrest Le Pen. She's like a, a libertarian. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but that's it. So anyway, they had a big election in Austria. And they, uh, you, I think the term is more accurate, populists and nationalists. The people want to maintain their own culture. What is wrong with that? Who are we to say that, no, Austria should take in more refugees? Oh, and by the way, Alex, no one, none of these hypocrites out there shooting off their mouths are talking about how the refugee crisis started. Oh, it could be because of Hitler's bombing of... Uh, Gaddafi has to go, and of course, when Gaddafi was in, there were no migrants or refugees flooding. Into he said Italy. you're going to get flooded attacking me, and then they blew up Syria and used it as a conduit on purpose to bring in the migrants. So let me ask you this question. Why would the bizarre globalist left, they're not really leftists, they're globalists, Merkel, Hollande, all of them, want to bring in four or five million people they know are military-age men, most of them, who they know will attack I guess they attack, then they declare civil emergency and take people's free speech. I mean, what is what is the elite thinking? Why would you want again, people from the worst third world countries? Again, it, it's out of control to the level is what I'm trying to say. They, they've destroyed Iraq. They've killed over a million people. You look at every day there are floods of refugees getting out of there. 
Floods of refugees leaving Afghanistan. Floods of refugees from the bombings leaving Syria and Libya. The point that I'm making, and going back to what you were saying. Global crisis. But about the populist movements. This is going to, it's going to backfire because you're seeing the elections in Germany. They just happened. Which goes to what you said. The white shoe boys aren't as smart as they think. Exactly. It's anti-European zone, an anti-European group, an anti-migrant and refugee, and pro-nationality. And you got a guy like Obama's going to Italy, to all these other countries, and saying, no, no, you cannot hang on to your identity. You have no right to claim your nationality. Your heritage and your ancestral roots don't count. We want you to be a nothing blended country. We'll tell you what to do. We're gonna pass these laws. We're multinationals. The Trans-Pacific Partnership rules you. Their arrogance blinds them. Well, Gerald Salente is our guest, Trends Research Journal, ladies and gentlemen. Find it at trendsresearch.com. That's trendsresearch.com. We're going to come back and dive into financial trends, gold, silver, Bitcoin, uh, the election, and other key points that he's going to raise. A lot of top newspapers and magazines have come out and said, I'm crazy. The CIA doesn't work with Hollywood or the media or music industry. It's all declassified and admitted, but hey, they just say I'm a liar. And did you hear Obama never said, never pledged no boots on the ground uh, in Syria. He said it 16 times on video. <laughs> You know, should I play the video of him saying it and then and then and then play them saying he never said it? Well, in fact, you know what? Fine, I'm a conspiracy theorist. You're right. I'll bet you all the chicken fried steak and beer you can eat and drink that these people think you're idiots. I don't think you're an idiot, and I'm not going to lie to you. I want to live in a country that's open and free. Joe Biggs is popping in with us. He's going to do a detailed report uh, in the fourth hour with David Knight. But I wanted Gerald Salente to hear this so he could talk about it. We'll go to Joe here in just a moment. First off. You need to sign up for the InfoWars Insider to get exclusive video, articles, you name it, but also promo codes daily with at least 10% off products that we don't offer anywhere else. And at least once a week, 30% off our top selling products. This is just for folks because it's, I, I never got into email years ago. I never used it, never had, but, but now as they censor us more and more on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, it's bad. We need to be able to email directly to you. It's one of the hardest things to censor Everybody needs to go to infowars.com forward slash newsletter and just put your email in or create one that's just for us so you can stay in contact. Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Just go there, do it today. Also, you get 10% off when you sign up for any of our products like the high quality non GMO coffee we have uh, that's organic and just delicious. Wake Up America coffee from Chiapas, Mexico. It's basically Guatemalan, but better. Uh, or whether the nutraceuticals, Infowars, store.com. A lot of products you want to sign up for auto ship. 10% off. And free shipping on orders of $50 or more. Our great secret 12 organic vitamin B12 that you absorb under the tongue. There's a lot of gut flora problems, as even the New York Times admitted last week. People aren't absorbing it. That's what's causing a lot of neurological problems. You need vitamin B12. And this isn't as good as injecting it, uh, but it's close. It's, 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 it's just it got rave reviews, 4.7 stars by third-party major sites. It is over the top. Uh, and it is back in Secret 12. Super Mel Vitality will sell out. It'll be a few weeks till we get more of it in. That, of course, is our flagship product. It's so amazing. X2 Nation Iodine is excellent as well. And this special will end soon. InfoWars Select Storable Foods. It's the best storable foods, most transportable, highest quality for the lowest price you're going to find until you get into a lot of crap that's out there. Uh, but it is the lowest price for what I would call really good quality. It's what I have for my family. It's what I'm putting here at the office in case things really go south. We're talking to Gerald about how bad this global meltdown will get, why the elites are getting armored with doubts and digging in. The point is, if you don't get storable food, I think you're crazy. And we have really high quality food at, at very affordable prices. Normally, it's very competitive. But with this special, we do twice a year. It's unprecedented. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarselect.com, 30 to 40% off. Now, I'm going to go uh, to, to uh, Gerald here, and he'll be with us uh, until the end of the hour. And then, of course, this gentleman to my right, Joe Beggs, uh, will be uh, popping in for 20 minutes in the, uh, in the fourth hour with David Knight to really flesh this out. But to brief Gerald Salente on this, I know he's always informed of anything I raise. 
because he's such a news hound. I mean, I'm not kissing his butt. It's just he's probably the most informed guy I know when it comes to hundreds and hundreds of stories, uh, you know, factoids. I throw at him each little factoid, and he has the rest of the answer. But Judicial Watch came out. We'll put it on screen in April uh, of 2015, over a year ago, and said, we have credible intel. There's a mosque and ISIS being brought in in the Mexico border. Well, we know it's happening. The head of Southcom came out and said, yes, it's true. They're bringing them in. That's the head of Southcom, the admiral. And Joe Biggs went down there, and the FBI, when he was getting on an airplane, and El Paso came and met with him and said, we can't believe you went down there. That's super dangerous. We believe what you're saying is Judicial Watch is investigating is accurate. Well, now we have a bombshell from Judicial Watch. Cartels help terrorists in Mexico get to U.S. to explore targets. ISIS militant uh, among them. Now, Joe, who's been blown up twice in armored vehicles and hit by shrapnel, and uh, he was embedded with media, so it's been written about in Esquire and Rolling Stone, you name it. He said he gets chills, kind of like, you know, the sword uh, sting when it gets around goblins or orcs when he was reading this. So just spend a few minutes on why you're concerned. Then you're going to be back in the next hour to flesh this out and to play some of the reports you shot. This is new, dovetailing with what your sources were saying over a year ago. So important work we're doing with Judicial Watch and others. Joe Biggs. Yeah, so Josh Owens and I went down there to investigate uh, these claims by Judicial Watch. We went to uh, El Paso and uh, actually showed these open borders. We filmed numerous reports showing how easy it is to come from, uh, you know, uh, Anapra, Juarez into El Paso and carry out an attack. And then I found a local and actually went into Anapra and did some investigating, found some moss. Now, there's some very interesting stuff in these articles saying that it's easy for these radical Islamic jihadists to ex basically to, uh, I don't Exploit. know, radicalize the Catholics that are in that area because it's a cartel-run area. They, they speak money, they speak blood, and that's what they understand. And now they're saying that there's this man who's been living there in an opera for over a year now, and this is his exact quote. The border that separates Mexico from the U.S. is so full of free zones that I could come in with a group of men in a few hours and kill thousands of people in Texas and Arizona. And that's what gave me goosebumps earlier. I've been pacing back and forth through the office because this further confirms our reports and what Judicial Watch said. And when I actually met with the FBI, the guy said that he finds us and Judicial Watch as a credible source. The fact that we went down there in itself was is well, they couldn't tell us the classified stuff, but they just said what you're reporting on is 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 credible. Yeah. So not just that we're uh, now. Now here's the issue: they're bringing in the radical jihadis. It's synthetic. They're letting them in to take our liberties at the highest levels, while different agencies actually try to fight this. The question is. Why is our government so arrogant to let this happen while groping us at the TSA and spying on us, quote, for our own good? You'll be breaking it down more in the fourth hour. Thank you, Joe Biggs. Thank you. I want to get uh, now Gerald Salente's take on that, see if Gerald has any questions for you. Sorry to cut into your time, Gerald, but I thought you'd want to uh, hear about this and give us your take on it. Well, you know, again, look look at this, the, the border issue over the years. I mean, what do we have, 50,000 kids flooding over? I mean, anybody could come over. And like you made the point, but they, they feel us up at the TSA. They, you, got, you got Homeland Security on the trains everywhere that you go. They listen to every word that we, we, we speak. They hack into everything that we do. Under the guise that they're going to protect us and the borders are wide open, you know, the whole thing is a sham. And again, are they going to attack in America? It's a question of, will it be a false flag or real? And again, no one's asking the question, by the way, how do you create these radical incidents? Well, who created? There was no ISIS before Afghanistan or Iraq. There were no radical jihadists other than when Jimmy Carter, you remember that one? Oh, yeah, what were they called then? Oh, the Mujahideen. That's right. Oh, Bin Laden. We got to stop them Russians up in Afghanistan. People forget this under Reagan as well. And then, of course, the bombing of Yugoslavia, Bill Clinton's continuing bombing of Iraq. The ref the, the, remember the sanctions he put on Iraq? 500,000 Iraqi children dead under the age of five. And they asked Madeleine Albright, or not all that bright, the Secretary of State on Steve on CBS was the death of 500,000 Iraqi children under the age of five worth the price of the sanctions? Yes, it was. 
So now we're destroying the entire Middle East, as I mentioned, Syria, Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, now bombs away in Somalia. Let's go to Sudan. How about Mali? Now you're a young guy. Everybody you love is dead. Your country's destroyed. You think you're going to buy into radicalism? So what are the elites thinking? What's the master plan? They're morons. Why can't we call them what they are? Psychopathic losers. Look at what they do. Look how they shoot their mouths off with arrogance. I have to read to you one of the most disgusting lines I've heard from Obama, eh, probably within the last week, because I could go way back. This is when he's over in the UK. Quote, I now he's pushing for the remain with the Brexit rather than leave to remain. Quote, I will say with the candor of a friend, when has he ever said anything with candor? But I'll continue. That the outcome of your decision is a matter of deep interest to the United States. Hey, everyone listening out there, don't you know that whether or not the UK stays in to the Eurozone, it's of deep interest to us as you can't drink the water in Flint? Don't go up to Hoosick Falls in New York. You're not going to like that water either. Stay away from the school water in Newark. I could go on. But let me continue. There are the tens. This is where it's disgusting. This is where he plays the World War II card of the men that gave their lives to, to sell multinationalism. The tens of thousands of Americans who rest in Europe's cemeteries are a silent testament to just how intertwined our prosperity and security truly are. And the path you choose now will echo in the prospects of today's generations of Americans as well. Could you imagine him saying those words? The men that thought, I have my Cousin, my mother's cousin, may rest in peace, Joe Lombardi came back with partial face left after World War II. I used to hear the World War II stories of who died, who came back crippled, and this clown of a man uses World War II to sell globalism? And where are the prostitutes calling him out? That's why they go after you. By the way, by the way, Gerald, great point. The EU was a Nazi project. That's BBC reporting on that. That's 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 public since the end of World War II. And it gets worse. Bill Nye, the science guy, says, yeah, go ahead and arrest climate change deniers, man-made climate change deniers, because, you know, we arrested Enron. Enron came up with the carbon tax scam. So they're saying, you know, the, don't let the Nazis get us have a euro when it's a Nazi project. Sorry, go ahead. But anyway, this is what's going on. And going back to... Why do they hate us? How about if we stayed home and fixed our own country? Everything they do turns to failure. We're in Afghanistan now, the longest war in American history by years. And they keep coming up. We got a new plan. Oh, and now they're going to, a new plan to get rid of ISIS. We got a new plan on how to save Libya after we destroyed it. Hey, I got a new plan to fix Iraq. Oh, boots on the ground, as you were talking about in Syria. We got a new plan. That $500 million of money that we took from you, the working little people of America, and gave it to the moderate rebels, and we've never seen what a moderate rebel looks like, and they lose the armaments. They go over to the people we're supposed to be fighting, and not only that, the moderate rebels join force. What I'm saying, Alex, you got a bunch of losers running the show. I agree, who think they know how to run things. In the past, we had corrupt globalists in some areas of control, but they knew what they were doing to a certain extent. We now have delusional people with a bunch of titles who think they're invincible. So where is it all going? What's going to happen? Why are the elites digging in, getting storable food, buying weapons, running off to New Zealand? That's even in mainstream news now. Why are they all now starting to leave the sinking ship? Well, they see what's going on. I mentioned earlier about China. You look at the outflows of money flowing out of China. 
and it's unprecedented, and they're buying up the world. If they just made a deal in Australia, they buy like a one percent of the land they, they, that they're going to own uh, with with this company they went into. So the elites are running from their countries, trying to find another country that's a safe haven. Oh, and by the way, you mentioned Chevron with the uh, carbon tax. Yeah, that was a Bill Clinton one, folks. Yeah, Al Gore and Bill Clinton to enrich the stock markets. Yeah, let's trade carbon taxes. So they're leaving because they see what's going on. And again, just look at the numbers. Whether you go to England and you look at the top end of the real estate market, down. Take a trip, go over to Miami. The top end of the real estate market, down over 20, 30%. Go to New York. The top end of the, the luxury market, down. The fish rots in the head, down. The, the tops of the markets now are starting to collapse in real estate. Look at today's numbers that came out with durable goods. A lousy 0.8%, and they downgraded February's from a minus 2.5 to a, to a, to a, a minus 3.7. Oh, and Obama says, Obama says, Quote, anyone saying the United States economy isn't strong is peddling fiction. Folks, look at the numbers. You talk about the numbers. I go to your site. Oh, and by the way, everyone listening, all those products that you mentioned that are for sale on Infowars.com and the, and, the, and the discounts that you give, put your money where your mouth is and where your mind is. Because as this thing goes down, the people that are going to survive and thrive are the ones that are going to be in the best shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And that's something you've written about for 30 years, voting with our dollars, supporting organizations and media that promote true freedom. That's one of our only votes we have left. And that's what the globalists are trying to get rid of. And that's why they're trying to ban local businesses and have regulations to shut down farmers markets and going after small farms. This is how you capture people. We're exactly. being put on a reservation. And that was the point that I was making with the vote that they had in the Netherlands. It was done a referendum by the people. When you look at the parties I talked about in the U in, in, uh, in Germany and Austria, this is Germany and Austria. This isn't, you know, the Marshall Islands I'm talking about. They came up from the ground, their grassroots from organizations like yours that put out the word in a broad spectrum and like ours. So this is why we have to unite and support in a new way, because any member that becomes the leader of the Bloods and the Crips, which people like to call the Democrats and Republicans, Nothing is going to change. Gerald, we're going to break. Gerald Salente is our guest. But briefly, how did Merkel and Hollande and all of them think they'd get away with bringing in 5 million people that run around murdering people? And I mean, it just shows that they're mentally ill. Look at that stupid little clown Hollande. Who could believe a guy like that for two seconds? You sat down in the bar and you saw him sitting next to you and he started talking to you. You wouldn't want to talk to him. Why? But you see what they do. They got the red carpets. They got all those guys with the guns and the uniform. Everybody's saluting. They play it up. It's show business for ugly people. That's right. Just, Gerald, stay that's there. Cool. Gerald's on fire. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Gerald's going to be with us a few minutes in the next hour. Then David Knight takes over with Joe Biggs with some really big ISIS Al-Qaeda news. That's what ISIS is, is Al-Qaeda. When our military said we don't want to back Al-Qaeda in Syria, they just... Change the name to Syria. I mean, change the name to ISIS. That's how they try to confuse people. It's the games they play. It's really crazy. And I don't uh, lionize our military and say it's perfect. It's not a lot of bad stuff. But the individuals in it are treated like crap when they get out, which shows you how evil this government is. And the same thing's happening all over the world because of high-tech media and the elites being separate from the people more than ever. They really are having their Marie Antoinette let them eat cake moments. Now, reportedly, she didn't really say let them eat cake, but when Obama gets up there and says you can't have air conditioning in cars, but he can, and that no prosperity for the general public is good, it shows you the real disconnect. Gerald, 
I think we're coming really to the end of this, but a decade is like the blink of an eye historically. And I'm not historically saying something better is on the other side, but this power structure is collapsing uh, as the public buys in uh, to the bull. There's more and more delusion, more and more mental illness. Now, there's a lot of people waking up, but it's a dichotomy, as you know, a paradox. There's a lot of people waking up, but also a lot of people getting more delusional. What are they going to do as the veneer of civilization peels off uh, like a reentry shield on a capsule? I mean, what are they going to do when the heat of truth burns through uh, that that shield of, of delusion? Because a lot of holes are in it already, but I look at this historically. Am I wrong to say we ain't seen nothing yet? Yeah, they're going to rob us of more of our rights and becomes more of a militarized uh, local police. And you've pointed it out before. You know how they've done away with the Posse Comitatus Act of the late 1870s that prohibited the military from doing uh, taking... Uh, uh, domestic uh, actions, and you reported on it all last year. So that's what they're doing. They're going to keep robbing us of our rights, and the people will go for it like that if there's a, quote, terrorist attack, be it false flag or real. You see it happen all over the world. So they use these incidents to take more and more of our power away from us as they give the power to the multinationals, as they're doing with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And the, and the other agreements, the transatlantic partnership deal. I just want to mention briefly, before we do run out of time, one thing that is really off the radar, and in talking about gold, you asked me earlier, is that, you know, China is now setting the benchmark for gold. And it was the Rothschilds set it up in the UK back in the early 1900s. And now, of course, the Chinese are the world's largest purchasers of gold. Now they're setting the benchmark. This is big news. If, you, if this is the stuff that you love to own and you're setting the price, you're going to set the price higher or lower. It is admitted, as you, and of course you're a big gold bug, that China more and more is controlling the price of gold. That's why it's going up some. Uh, but can the globalists try to wrest control back from them? No, because it gets, it's, it's a numbers game. What does China have? What, 1.2 billion people? And, and, and the United States, look at, look at, the, look at as, as Trump keeps talking about, you know, the trade deficits. Could China keep it going? They'll keep it going to an extent, but it's a numbers game at the end. Because as the global economies decline and fall, again. Well, that's right. You said QE wouldn't work. It hasn't worked. So hasn't. they say more QE is the answer. What's going to happen? Uh, well, I mean, they admit it doesn't work, but they're going to do the same thing. How bad is it going to get? Again, the currencies are going to collapse and gold is going to go up. It's just common sense. Yeah, I agree with you in a common sense world and historically, but they got a lot of weird tricks up their sleeve. But I agree with this with Gerald back in 70 seconds. They can only cover this up and paper over with fancy computers so long. Reality will set in back in 70 seconds. Infowars.com forward slash show. Stay with us and check out. The Trends Journal as well. Stay with us. TrendsResearch.com is Gerald Salente's website. Sign up there and get free email alerts. More sign up and get his quarterly publication and also see his nightly news reports. Everybody needs to support the fine work of Gerald Salente. I, I know most of you know what he's talking about. And you know more than I do in many cases. The audience I know is smarter than I in many ways. But we got to get this out to everybody else. And that's starting to happen. But it's a numbers game, as he said. We're in a race against time, people. Because the globalists are going to use the crises they've created to get more control. They admit that. They have a philosophy. They have a program. We know what it is. And it's really bad. It's anti-prosperity for us. Because they don't want to just have prosperity. They want it for them and then not for us. They want to be up on the hill with the helicopters. And we're down here in shacks like Brazil. Argentina. People say, why can't Latin America get their act together? There have been cases where there were countries there richer than the U.S., like Argentina. They got taken over by shenanigans. And the elites down there admit they use economic warfare as control. There aren't many countries like the U.S., folks. That's why they run it down so much where you are allowed to operate and live. And, Gerald, I know you talk about that a lot. In the few minutes we've got left, other important points that, as you say, really aren't on the radar or other points you want to make. Well, first, I just want to pick up on what you were saying. Now, this isn't a conspiracy theorist or theory. 
Look at the rights that have been robbed from us since 9-11 happened. Look at in one administration after the other. And of course, Obama lying his way into office, saying, you know, he was going to reverse these things and, and made things worse. Look at how many, what do you lock up more whistleblowers than all the presidents before him in total? So it's not a conspiracy theory. It's in front of us. It's happening. We're losing not only our rights, our right to earn a living wage because of the, the, the taking away of laws and regulations that give the money to all the, the elite. And again, the one great thing that happened from Occupy Wall Street was they made the 1% visible. And of course, you find out, no, it's not 1%. It's 0.01%. So it's really up to us to change it. And Americans, for some reason, have this helpless feeling. And again, all you have to do is look what happened in Austria last week. This is Austria. Everybody remember Austrian Hungarian Empire, Germany. Yeah, Germany, the, the, the engine of manufacturing in Europe. New governments are happening. People are re fighting to retain their dignity, their respect. And it's up to us to do the same, and we can do it. We wrote the book. We are the Americans, the American Revolution. We have the Constitution and a Bill of Rights before, and it's not a conspiracy theory. They robbed us of them. So it's in our hands. We're the trailblazers. We're one of the cradles of liberty. We have to stop just being watching TV and being spectators and get in the game and realize the animating contest of liberty is now. Exactly. And so everyone, again, it only comes with, with support and a unified action plan. And again, well, you know what? I'm glad the elite are running off to other countries and hiding out. Like you've said, you've doubled down, moving to the birthplace of America, colonial uh, area there in New York. Uh, I've doubled down. I'm not leaving. Uh, you know what? I'm... And, and we're going to be the leaders, not that I want to be, but our information will be the leaders, our listeners will be the leaders that lead us out of this system. We're going to win, Gerald. Hey, it does not take a majority to prevail, rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Samuel Adams. That's right, absolutely. And, and, and Thomas Jefferson made similar statements. Gerald Salente, we salute you as a fellow, a pro-human, pro-liberty uh, American. But it's, it's, it's a worldwide movement, 1776 to the next level. Thank you, sir. Thank you.